But I think, and I think you agree with me, that we could tighten up the purchases of guns, and particularly heavy weapons like the ARs. We can tighten those up. I would, I would support, for example, anybody owning an AR in America would have to register with the FBI. So the FBI would have to know who has these weapons. And now people go, well, we don't want to. We believe the government's oppressive and they're, they're going to do this and it's a slippery slope. But I think that we have to do things like that. Am I wrong? I agree with you entirely. Look, in 1994, I supported the ban on assault weapons. And the same column in which I supported it, I predicted it would have zero effect. Well, we've had studies about how it, how, what effect it had. It was in force for 10 years. So it's a very good experiment in time. It had no effect on the level of homicide. It had no effect on the lethality and the injurious nature of gun homicide, of violence. And we know that to be a fact. So it isn't as if we are theorizing here from nothing. We've done this and it didn't have an effect. And the main reason is that there's so many loopholes. If you look at the Feinstein law, the one she is now proposing to reintroduce, she exempts 900 kinds of weapons. The loopholes here are so enormous that it will have no appreciable effect no. on the homicide all rate. That show so that everybody that. will feel good, and you can demonize the NRA. Won't make any difference. Show me a law that will make a difference, and I'll support it. And me too. So Brad Hammer and O'Reilly are right on the same page here. We don't mind laws that will work but just laws that give the government more power and take the power away from the individual, no. And, and bring me empirical evidence. Charles